Hello guys, and welcome back to Jaegerists. In today's video, we will be going through the story of Peakfinger. Leave a like on this video and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more content like this. Peak grew up in the Liberio internment zone, and lost her mother early on in childhood. Seeing that her father had gotten sick and would not survive long without proper medical care, Peak joined the warrior program as soon as she was eligible. After performing well enough to be selected to inherit one of the Marlian Titans, Peek was able to secure her father the treatment he needed. Despite this, Peek recognized that her father now had a sadness in his eyes after learning that she would only live for 13 more years due to the curse of Emir. After Peek inherited the powers of the Cart Titan, she was kept in Marley along with Zeke Jaeger as a deterrent to enemy nations while the other warriors are sent to take part in the Paradise Island operation. Five years into the mission to reclaim the founding Titan, Peak journeys to Paradise Island with Zeke Jaeger and a contingent of Marleyan soldiers, using her cart Titan to carry supplies for them. She is present as Zeke and the soldiers transform the inhabitants of a small village into Titans. Peak is one of the warriors brought by Zeke to engage the Survey Corps in Shiganshanon District. During the night before the soldiers' arrival, Peak keeps watch for their movement in the desolate regions of Walmaria south of Trost District. Upon seeing the advancing soldiers, she returns to the ruins of Shiganshanon and informs Zeke, Reiner, and Berthold of their approach. Peak remains with Zeke's Beast Titan during the ensuing battle, serving as a cargo mule of sorts for the warrior's various supplies. Peak also assists Zeke by supplying him with rocks to crush and throw at the soldiers. Berthold is kept hidden in a barrel atop Peak's back as a plan B against the Survey Corps, and upon Reiner's defeat at the hands of the soldiers' Thunder Spears, Berthold is removed from her Titan's back and thrown by the Beast Titan into the city. The soldiers choose to engage in a suicidal charge against the Beast Titan in order to buy time for Captain Levi to move in for a counterattack. As Zeke decimates them, he is quickly caught off guard and defeated by Levi. Peek comes to his rescue and carries his dismembered human form away. Zeke guides Peek into Shiganshanon to rescue Reiner and Berthold, only to find Berthold incapacitated and captured by Aaron Jaeger. Zeke attempts to talk Aaron down, but the arrival of Levi forces the two to abandon Berthold. Searching elsewhere in the district, the cart titan rescues Reiner from capture before climbing atop Walmaria where the warriors are safe. After returning to Marley, Peak is among those that send off the initial survey ship sent to Paradise Island. Four years later, Peak is present at the Battle of Fort Slava at the climax of the war between Marley and the Mideast Allied forces. While Colt suggests that she should engage in combat with the fort's defenses, Commander Theo Magoth denied the suggestion due to the presence of anti-titan artillery, which could kill any titan with a single round. Once the artillery is destroyed, Peek enters the battlefield with her cart titan fully armored and equipped with four manned machine guns and begins to assault the bunkers of the Mideast Allied forces alongside Porco Galliard's jaw titan. After the battle, Peek joins Galliard and Reiner Braun, recovering from his injuries received in the battle. As a result of spending two consecutive months in her titan form, Peek has been forced to walk with a crutch. While Reiner leaves, Peek stays behind to rest by Galliard. She later joins the rest of the Marleyan military on the train returning to their hometown, seated among the other warriors. When the train reaches the station, Peek gets off the train and walks with the rest of the warriors towards Liberio, when inside she is happily greeted by her father. Peek is later seen at the warrior headquarters, spotted by Galliard walking on all fours like her titan, as she believes it to be more natural. Galliard, irritated, tells her to walk on two feet like a normal human. Throughout the meeting between the warriors, Peek is observed sitting on a couch and furthers Zeke Jaeger's argument that the Tiber family is necessary to help the warriors regain the founding titan. Peek later attends a military meeting discussing the logistics of an assault on Paradise Island. She stays silent until the conclusion of this meeting, when she goes outside to join her fellow warriors on a balcony. Peek expresses her discontent with the senior military officers, finding them foolish for their lackluster past plans, and wonders about the future of the Eldians. Sometime before the beginning of Willie Tiber's speech at the Liberio Festival, Peek and the other warriors are ordered to take their seats as ambassadors of Marley. After they are seated, a Marleyan soldier informs the warriors that Magoth wants to see them. Along the way, the soldier dismisses Zeke, causing Peek to become suspicious. She comments that the soldier feels familiar, but becomes distracted when she sees the panzer unit that operates the artillery her cart titan carries in battle. Peek eagerly goes over and discreetly informs them about her suspicions regarding the soldier escorting them. The soldier leads Peek and Galliard to an empty building, and she realizes that they have been led into a trap as the soldier cuts a nearby rope. It opens a trap door beneath her and Galliard. Peek and Galliard fall into a warrior confinement area, fracturing their bones in the process. They observe the lack of space to transform, so decide to wait with the supplies provided. Galliard questions the identity and intentions of the soldier who trapped them. 
Peek states that she is not sure, but she remembers the soldier from somewhere before. Later, the two begin to feel tremors from outside. Peek deduces that the tremors are from Titans fighting outside and that this would be the reason they were trapped. While discussing a means of escape, her panzer unit comes to the warrior's rescue. She explains to Galliard that she took safety measures because of their suspicious escort. The soldiers let down a rope and help the warriors climb out of the pit. Peek's unit informs them about the attack titan's sudden appearance and how the Warhammer Titan is currently engaging it in battle. Peek orders her unit to prepare her titan's armor, and Galliard prepares to go and join the battle. Before he leaves, Peek suggests that he observe the situation for a while so they can better understand the enemy attacking them. They are then shocked to see a group of soldiers fly over them using vertical maneuvering equipment. As the others stare in awe, Peek recalls seeing the same technology during her brief time on Paradis Island. Though it takes some time, Peek has her panzer unit equip her titan with the heavy machine gun armament, believing that it would be perfect against the vertical maneuvering equipment. When she arrives at the battlefield, she and the panzer unit surprise the Survey Corps with an artillery barrage, killing several soldiers and saving Galliard from death. She perches on top of a building and joins the rest of the Titans of Marley in a showdown against the Survey Corps. Peek provides cover for Zeke as two soldiers try to approach him with Thunder Spears, but nearly gets killed by one, only for Galliard to save her. After thanking him, Peek is told to watch out for the Ackerman lurking nearby. She tells Galliard that what they need to do is protect Zeke. Peek then sees the explosion caused by the transformation of the Colossus Titan at the edge of the city, realizing that Bertholdt Hoover was killed and had his Titan ability stolen by the enemy. After Galliard charges towards Aaron Jaeger, Peek tries calling him back but to no avail. She then groups up with Zeke to attack the Survey Corps but is surprised to see Zeke fall. She and her Panzer unit become the focus of the Survey Corps and one of her gunners is shot in the head. She charges towards the soldier who killed him, but Jean Kirstein intercepts her and launches a Thunder Spear at Peek. It bounces off her Titan's helmet and into one of the eye slots where it detonates. The rest of Peek's gunners are killed by a barrage of Thunder Spears which also severely damages her Titan. Peek stumbles off the roof of the building and falls right in front of Falco Grease, Gabby Braun, and Magoth. Beaten and injured, Peek is momentarily saved by the sudden intervention of Falco who shields her from Jean. When Jean fires his Thunder Spear, Peek releases a small burst of steam and he misses his shot. This gives Falco and Gabby enough time to get Peek away from the battle, while Magoth and his soldiers cover their escape. By the time they get Peek to safety, she later stirs as the warrior candidates call out for Reiner. Peek realizes that the soldier who had trapped her in Galliard was aboard the first survey ship sent to Paradis, and presumed to have perished after it failed to report in. Believing the soldier to be a follower of Zeke, Peek reports to Magoth her suspicions. After the battle, Peek recovers in a room together with Reiner Braun and Porco Galliard. During an emergency meeting, Theo Magoth explains Peek's theory that Zeke Yeager has been planning his raid with a team of co-conspirators from inside the Marleyan military. Magoth then tells the others they will wait for the Global Alliance to assemble, before Reiner declares that they should launch a surprise attack against Paradis Island now. Peek is sent along with Galliard ahead of the other Marley forces to Paradis Island to seek out Eren. As she reads a newspaper, she manages to overhear a few citizens bitterly comment about the recent actions of the Survey Corps. She then infiltrates the ranks of the Jaegerists within Shiganshanon. When Aaron Jaeger enters Gabby Braun's prison cell to convince her to cooperate, Peek surprises him by stabbing an accompanying guard in the throat. Pointing her firearm at Aaron, Peek tells Gabby to be silent while confirming her target's identity, threatening to kill Aaron if he does not comply. Peek ultimately backs down due to her mission of taking Aaron in alive. After telling Aaron that she wishes to free the Eldians just like him, Gabby immediately accuses her of being a traitor like Zeke. Peek tells Gabby that despite the heads of the military telling them otherwise, the warriors and their families are not honorary Marleyans and will always be seen as lower class citizens. When Gabby protests, Peek reminds her that with the advancements in technology, Marley will no longer rely solely on titans for warfare and all the Eldians, honorary or not, will be killed due to not being needed anymore. Aaron asks her to prove herself, and Peek volunteers to show him where the other infiltrators are located. After being handcuffed to Gabby and taken to the roof, Peek asks Aaron if this means they are on the same side. Aaron merely responds that Peek should not try anything, due to potentially killing Gabby if she tries to transform. They meet Yelena at the roof. Peek whimsically recalls her treachery in Liberio, mentioning that Yelena looked nice with the fake goatee. When pressured to reveal her comrades, Peek grips Gabby's hand and smiles at her. She then turns and points at Aaron. Just then, Galliard's jaw titan bursts through and takes Aaron and the Jaegerists by surprise. As this happens, Peek grabs Gabby and dives out of the way. As the jaw titan shields them from the blast of Aaron transforming, Peek tells Gabby that while she does want to free the Eldians, 
she trusts her comrades to help with the liberation efforts. After getting away, Peek calls out to Galliard. Galliard spots that Peek and Gabby are shackled together and cuts off her lower arm so that she can transform. Peek falls off the roof and transforms, having Gabby climb into her titan's mouth, and the two flee. They meet up with Magoth and his soldiers, and Peek informs them of the number of Paradis' forces, and that Zeke has not yet arrived in the district. Peek and Magoth are puzzled by the fact that Aaron has not yet activated the Founder, but Gabby's revelation that Zeke stated that Paradis has now a titan of royal blood leads them to theorize that Zeke is that titan, and that Aaron needs to be in contact with him to activate the Founder. Peek declares that they cannot allow Aaron and Zeke to come into contact with each other, and begins to climb Wall Maria with Magoth. Upon reaching the top of the wall, Magoth mans the cannon and shoots Aaron's titan in the head, temporarily disabling him. They fire another shot at Aaron to incapacitate him further, but before they can fire any more, they are interrupted by Zeke's arrival. After Zeke annihilates the Marleyan airships, he takes aim at Peek and she is barely able to avoid a barrage of stones. Clinging to the side of the wall, she advises Magoth to not fight Zeke head-on, but he refuses. Just then, a small group of Jaegerists arrive and begins to target them, forcing Peek to retreat. To trick her pursuers, Peek exits her titan form and hides in the steam of her titan's decaying body, making it look as though she has been killed. The Jaegerists are then fired upon by Marleyan soldiers from the cart titan's carcass, while Magoth subtly angles the artillery to get a clear shot at Zeke. Afterwards, Magoth lands a direct hit on Zeke's beast titan knocking him off the wall. As Magoth fires another shot into the head of Aaron's Titan, both he and Peek come under attack from Flock Forster and the Jaegerists. They manage to fend off their attackers and resume firing upon Aaron and Zeke. However, the artillery cannon is then destroyed by the efforts of both Armin Arlert and Mikasa Ackerman. With no artillery to continue shooting at Aaron and Zeke's Titan forms, Peek is forced to engage her two assailants, targeting them both. Peek proclaims it is over and charges towards Mikasa. However, before she can, Aaron makes contact with Zeke to start the rumbling, and Peek grips the wall as it begins to disintegrate beneath her. Like all subjects of Emir, Peek is then able to suddenly hear Aaron's voice and his declaration to protect the people of Paradise Island. Peek and Magoth retreat from Shiganshanon and observe Marley's airships leaving the island. As Peek and Magoth discuss what to do next, they are caught off guard by an approaching soldier. Peek prepares to attack, but the soldier insists that they and their companion are harmless. Peek and Magoth later agree to join forces with Hange and Levi in order to stop Eren. The group contacts Jean Kirsten and Mikasa and coordinates a plan for Peek to rescue them along with Anyankapon and Yelena. Using her titan form, Peek abducts Jean, Anyankapon, and Yelena and takes them back to Hange, Levi, and Magoth. That night, as the combined forces of Marley and Paradis are eating together, Magoth attempts to ask Yelena where Eren intends to attack first. The Survey Corps try to remind her that her homeland, which she joined the volunteers to save from Marley, will be destroyed by Eren, and Peek shocks them all by revealing that she has discovered that Yelena is, in fact, Marleyan. The following day, Peek is sent to scout Paradis' docks to see if it will be safe for the group to follow Eren. Peek returns from her mission to reveal that the Jaegerists have occupied the docks in anticipation of retaliation against Eren. While her allies engage the Jaegerists, Peek uses her titan form to transport the members of the group who are unable to fight. Peek tries to advise Falco Grease against joining the battle, but the youth chooses to ignore her. Peek leaves the non-combatants on a boat in the harbor and engages the Jaegerists herself. She is joined by Falco, and the two quickly wipe out the remaining Jaegerists. As the group prepares to leave, Falco begins losing control of his titan form and Peek attempts to talk him down. Talking proves futile and Falco attacks Peek, forcing her to subdue him while Magoth cuts him out of its titan. The ordeal leaves Peek badly injured, and she has to be carried onto the boat by Hange. As they escape from the harbor, a grieving Peek embraces Gappy as they witness General Magoth sacrifice himself by blowing up a Marleyan cruiser on the dock. After arriving in Odaha, Peek attempts to comfort Falco after informing him of Magoth's death and Liberio's destruction. Afterwards, hearing that Levi is planning to interrogate Yelena, Peek volunteers to join. After getting Yelena to reveal Eren's next destination, Peek informs Kiyomi that she intends to lock Gabi and Falco in their room on the ship so that they cannot board the flying boat. Kiyomi agrees to watch over the children in her stead. After saying goodbye to Annie, who intends to stay behind, Peek and Reiner join the Survey Corps. Hange gives them the opportunity to stay behind, but the two insist that they are continuing until the end. Preparations for departure are interrupted by Flock, who damages the boat's fuel tank necessitating time for repairs to be done. As Eren's Titans arrive in Odaha, Hange stays behind to hold them off while Peek and the others board the boat and depart. As the flying boat reaches Eren, it comes under fire from the Beast Titan, 
as the rest of the group jump from the boat. Peek grabs the explosives and drags them out of the boat with her. Transforming mid-air, Peek transports the explosive in her titan's mouth while her comrades engage the beast titan. They make quick work of the beast, but Zeke is not found in its nape. Peek and the group retreat to give Armin room to transform and uncover Zeke's location with the blast, but he is overtaken by an army of titans which begins generating atop Eren's titan. Levi devises a plan to save him, but Peek reveals that the titans they are facing are former inheritors of the nine titans. Realizing that Eren can generate an infinite number of titans, Peek tries to rush to his nape on her own and use the explosives to kill him. She manages to set the explosives around his nape, but before she can set them off, her titan gets impaled by the younger sister of Willy's Warhammer Titan. Exiting her titan, Peek quickly transforms again and kills the Warhammer Titan. She uses her titan to kill nearby titans attacking Jean before ejecting from her titan as it is torn apart. Transforming once more in mid-air, Peek explains to Jean that her cart titan's endurance effectively allows her to transform as many times as she wants, Jean attempts to reach the explosives Peek left at Eren's nape, but is cut off by more titans, and Peek sullenly admits that even her abilities are not enough to clear a path to the explosives. Peek's regeneration abilities reach their limit and leave her unable to heal her injury, requiring Jean to return and save her. Jean attempts to retreat to Reiner with her, but the two find that Reiner himself has been overwhelmed. Peek and Jean are nearly killed, but they are saved by the intervention of Porco and Marcel Galliard's Jaw Titans. Peek transforms again and joins her resurrected comrades in holding off the remaining hostile titans, while Jean finally reaches Eren's nape and destroys it. Falco's flying jaw titan arrives to retrieve the group and Peek convinces Jean to leave Reiner behind, to ensure Eren does not regenerate before Armin transforms. The group returns to Fort Salta, where Peek is able to reunite with her father. Their reunion is short-lived, however, when it is revealed that Eren and the source of all living matter both survived Armin's transformation. The source begins emitting smoke at the base of Fort Salta, and Peek is horrified to learn from Levi that the smoke is going to turn the Eldians present into pure titans. Grief-stricken, Peek joins Mikasa and Levi aboard Falco as her father and companions are transformed. Peek is given the task of helping Reiner prevent the source from returning to Eren, while Mikasa and Levi engage Eren directly with Armin. She attacks the source directly but is quickly overwhelmed by the army of pure titans along with Reiner and Annie. Following Eren's death, the power of the Titans is eliminated from the world, and all of the Eldians return to their human forms. As her Eldians all begin to recover memories of Eren which he temporarily erased, Peek jokingly laments that she would have liked to speak with him as well. As the Eldians regroup, the surviving Marleyan soldiers from Salta come out to confront them. The Marleyans threaten to kill them if they cannot prove that they are no longer Titans, and only Armin is able to talk them down. In the three years following Eren's death, the survivors of the Battle of Heaven and Earth at Fort Salta are made peace ambassadors between the remnants of the outside world and Paradis. As the ambassadors sail to Paradis to begin peace talks in the year 857, Annie points out that the odds of them successfully negotiating with Paradis are low. Armin, however, is confident that the sight of the warriors and the Survey Corps, former enemies, working together, will be enough to get the Eldians of Paradis to listen. Thank you so much for watching this video. It really means a lot to us. We will see you guys very soon in one of our next videos.